Hello everybody, MinoHaxer here, and I'm going to bring you guys a quick patch 4.5 rundown because there's a lot of new things that happened in this patch, and I think there's enough things in this patch that happened that affected the support that actually warrant me to make a video about it because I think that there's a lot of really interesting changes that will heavily affect the support metagame, and I think that uh, it's good for me to address this for you guys because I'm going to give you guys my insight on what I think about these changes and what champions I think will be really good and what I think you should now support so you can get a head start on your opponent. Because I think uh, what I've been doing in solo queue is that I've been just kind of trying around with a lot of new changes and I've turned around a lot and I think all the stuff I say right now are things I tested on and I think I can say with pretty good certainty that I'm correct on. So uh, take what I say with a little bit of grain of salt. But I think what I'm going to say to you guys about this patch is pretty spot on. So I'll go over some of the smaller changes on people uh, and then work my way towards the more significant things like the item changes and rune changes and stuff like that. So uh, Leona got a small nerf, like W Eclipse got nerfed a little bit, Base Hell Regen got nerfed a little bit because she was absurdly strong. I don't think it's going to affect anything. Leona is still going to be played a ton. She's still a really strong pick. Lulu, this is more for Lulu mid, but it still kind of affects Lulu support with, like, we're nerfing picks a little bit, which I think is fine, because I don't even think picks is that strong on support Lulu anyways, so it's okay. Um, not, nothing else really was really there. Um, Aether Wisp, which now builds into Twin Shadows. Uh, this is actually pretty interesting, because now, what's good is that Twin Shadows is now a new high costing item that gives you 10% CDR for support because before the only item that gave you 10% CDR that actually costed a lot of money was Locket of Iron Solari and now the Twin Shadows is a new item that does this it opens up a lot more routes so that way well, you don't have to build a Locket if you want the 10% CDR because a lot of times when I used to play a lot in the last couple patches I would always end up with 30% CDR if I itemize with like 5% masteries, 5% runes, get a talisman, and then I'm like, well, where do I get 10%? So uh, I usually got a locket, but now you can get Twin Shadows, which is a really neat option now, since it actually gives you a decent amount of AP, gives it 10% TDR, and it just gives you the ghost active, which could be useful as a um, as, as like an extra form of CC, because so that's cool. Forbidden Idol is also a really, really good item. So basically, double Fairy Charm and 390 gold for 10% for CDR and some Mandarin Gen. So now this thing is the new um, least costing item to get if you want 10% CDR randomly. And this is actually pretty cool because you can get this with like, you can get like a Forbidden Idol and another Chalice and you'll just have like a ridiculous amount of mana regen like I started playing support in Italy just because Forbidden Idol came out and I would just like rush to Forbidden Idol and all of a sudden I just had a lot more mana and so it was pretty sweet um it didn't really change Marlonomicon didn't really change Talisman by that much because now you can build um you can build like the Talisman with the Medallion and Forbidden Idol instead of getting a Fairy Charm so that's kind of nice that you can already get the 10% CDR from Talisman like ahead of time so you can itemize a little bit differently if you need more mana regen in lane, which is kind of a neat point, I guess, but didn't really affect anything that much. Frost Queen claim, price increase, but got more ability power, which I guess is okay. It doesn't really change anything. It's still, like, an okay item. Like, it, I wouldn't get it all the time, but I would still prefer Talisman over Frost Queen claim, but that's just my personal opinion. Face of the Mountain also got a little bit more gold increase. A little bit more HP, once again, doesn't really change anything. Face of the Mountain's like, okay. If you're already getting a Relic Shield, but you still want to play more of like a Peel role, like, if you're like Leona and you get a Relic Shield, but you don't really want to, like, go super ham with the Talisman because you don't need it, then I guess Face of the Mountain's okay on that. Uh, Ages of the Legion got slightly changed in that now you get a Negatron Cloak there uh, as a component, which I guess is nice, since... Getting four items is kind of stupid. <laughs> like, there is definitely no room for that. So, just making an Eggatron Cloak is pretty good. And now it now gives a uh, plus 20 magic resistance. And they took out the plus 20 armor, which I think is a really good change. Because you only really get Aegis anyways to give everybody a um, aura for MR. So, that's pretty nice. Mocket didn't really change that much. Like, it's just compensating for the change for the Aegis, which... It's fine. It's pretty dang expensive though. 2,800 gold is a lot. So, 
I, it's pretty costly, but I think it'll be worth it in the end since now it gives to 20 magic resistance, which I think is really, really strong now. So in some cases, it's definitely worth getting like as your first core item just because sometimes you like if you're going to group early as a team, you might just need an Aegis like really quickly if they have like stupid people like a Nidalee who's just going to poke you all day or like double AP or something like that. So I would heavily consider Aegis as a really good item to get now. The only thing to note is that you actually do not get CDR anymore. So now Locket is not an option if you want the 10% CDR. So if you want the CDR, you might have to just go for a Twin Shadows or you can just buy like an Elixir of Brilliance or something like that. <laughs> I don't really know. Mm, Glacial Shroud didn't really change that much. They took out like pretty much all the CDR actually, which is pretty significant because some supports would get Frozen Heart, like Leona, sometimes Thresh, and definitely Blitzcrank. So not having CDR anymore just kind of sucks a lot. It really only gives you armor, and so I don't know if I would buy this on like Leona or Thresh anymore. Maybe if I really needed the attack speed reduction aura, but I wouldn't really consider it like as a core just because mm, I don't really think it's that worth it. Maybe on Blitzcrank, I would still probably buy this. Um, I guess Captain Boots, I'll mention that. <laughs> Captain Boots got a small upgrade, but I don't think it's... I don't think it's worth paying 600 gold for 10% movement speed. Like, I guess late game, but I still don't think it's worth it. Like, like I, this is probably still going to be your last item, because I still think there are better things you can spend 600 gold on than 10% movement speed for people walking towards you. It's kind of stupid. And now runes. So runes are really different now. And I think this is actually going to change what supports are going to be played now. Because um, there's a lot of interesting things that happen. So basically, the big thing to note is that armor got nerfed, right? So armor is not worth as much. And everyone got an increased amount of base armor. So that way, if you run armor seals and with the, com and with, like, the base armor you get compensated for, you're going to have the same amount of armor they gave you before they did these changes. And so... I think that since you got four free armor, and this only really gives you nine extra armor, if you compare that to armor marks, armor marks give you about, like, almost nine armor also. So, like, I really don't see the point in getting the seal armor unless you really, really, really need the armor against a dumb auto-attacking lane like Caitlyn Thresh or something like that. If I, don't, I think if you're not against, like, a heavy auto-attacking AD and Thresh... Like, just don't get armor seals bot lane. I don't think it's worth it, because I think someone on Reddit did some, like, calculations on, like, if you should get armor or HP and which one would be better. I'm pretty sure he concluded that HP would be better once you hit about, like, a thousand something HP, given if you're against, like, maybe, like, a, like, a Lucian, like, Leona or something like that. Like, it's worth, more worth to get HP instead. And so that's what I've been starting to do, and I think that has actually have been working a little bit better. So I would definitely get uh, flat HP instead of getting the armor. I know flat HP is really damn expensive, but I think it's worth it because I mean I already had flat HP runes to begin with, but you start off with 72 extra health, which is quite a bit. That's actually as much as the quints, like almost as much as the quints, because the quints give you 78. So having 72 is pretty good because it gives you plus 150 HP at the start. Which is really damn good. So I would definitely consider getting Seals of Hell because they're really, really strong. Like, ridiculously strong. I haven't tried the health regen, um, but it might be good. I haven't actually tried it. I personally am not a fan of health regen because I prefer to play all in than to play passively. But that's kind of me. And also, I guess since, like, these runes aren't, the other runes aren't mentioned to consider, you should also maybe consider getting. You can probably get away with gold for 10 seals now, because you don't really need the 9 armor from this. You can get 9 armor from from the marks. So if you're going to play passively, you can just get armor marks, and then get gold for 10 seals, and like gold for 10 quints, I guess, if you want. If you want to play really passively. And I guess that can help you go a lot if you end up turtling a lot, like with Soraka or like Janna or something like that. And you should also consider getting mana regen seals. Those things are really strong, and I've actually been running that on, like, I'm running that on Nidalee, but, like, mana regen seals give you a crap ton of mana regen early on. Like, it's really, really significant for you to notice the difference on it. So, I would recommend that if you don't want armor, especially if you're playing, like, Sona, 
who really needs mana a lot, like all the time, and maybe Nami too. Like you should get mana regen seals. I recommend those. Glyphs, not really much has changed. They buff mana regen glyphs, so now they're a little bit better. So I have been using mana re some mana regen glyphs as well as mana regen seals. So I get like with a spell thief's edge, I get about four point something mana regen, which is pretty ridiculous at level one. So just want to point that out there. I don't think cooldown reduction glyphs are worth it at all. You're never going to hit level 18 on a support anyways, so don't get these. Don't fall for this trap. It's a bad trap. And I guess scaling mana magic resist doesn't really count for us because you don't really need scaling magic resist. If you're going to get magic resist, you should just get flat. Quintessences, they buff CDR, but... Once again, don't get CDR quints. I think that's super unnecessary because CDR glyphs are already really good. Like, you get 7.5% CDR from just glyphs anyways. So I don't see why you would get the quints. Cause, and 7.5 is a really bad number anyways. You usually just want 5%. You can just get 5% from your glyphs. So I really don't see the point in getting the quints at all. Unless you, like, really wanted, like, you could get 7.5% from quints. 7.5% from Gliss, and you get 15% CDR, but I don't think that's worth it at all. I mean, with 50% CDR, you can get 5% from Masteries, and then you get 20% from, like, Talisman. And then you're 40%, which is really easy, but I don't think it's worth it. Mm, and also, I guess I'll address this, because it's not really applicable support, but I think it's going to change a lot of things. Nerfing Life Seal Quintessence suck a lot, because now... What's going to happen is that I've already seen most ADs are not running um, Lifesteal anymore. Most ADs are running like Attack Speed or like Armor Pen or like Flat AD or something like that. So now that Lifesteal is out of the question, ADs are going to be a lot more sustain heavy because a lot more ADs don't have... Like one potion and a Dorn's Late is not enough to make you last in lane for a very long time. So I think it's much worth your time to pick a support that actually heals now. Mostly because I think that in the long run, having heal will let you win the lane. Now that people can't sustain anymore, I don't think it's going to make the lane any more like aggressive or all in. I think if you pick somebody like Soraka or like Nami or like Sona or something like that, and you just start spamming the crap out of heals with like your mana regen seals and glyphs and stuff like that, I think that is a new way to win lane through like a more passive approach to like poke and sustain. And I think you can actually win lane through that. I honestly think that I predict, like, four weeks from now, Soraka is going to be super, super top tier. I'm going to predict it right now. And if I'm right, I'm going to tell you guys I called it. I think Soraka is super strong. Like, I think Soraka will become worse and worse, especially since a lot of people are seeing her being played mid. You can easily take that same build mid, just stake it in support, and she suddenly becomes super ridiculously strong. Like, this one guy I've been playing against with in Challenger, he's only plays... AP Soraka support, and he's the most terrifying guy I've ever laid against. And I tried out his build a lot to a Soraka, and it works very well. So I think I might make a video about it at some point, but I highly recommend you try out Soraka and just going like Dorn's Ring start, like all AP runes, and just going ham with Star Call. It's ridiculous. Like you have no, you have no idea if you've never played Soraka. Um, I guess Feast. Nah, it doesn't. I don't think this is enough to account for the life steal changes at all. Uh, scavenger's buff is okay, I guess. Doesn't not really much changed. Um, but summoner spells are also cool. So exhaust. Now exhaust, um, is more of a damage debuff, higher range, less attack speed. What that means is that you should use exhaust to negate the burst of people more than just kind of crippling someone um and it's really good if you're against like what like i already picked exhaust very rarely if i'm against like assassins and if you're now once again if you're against assassins do you have even a better reason to pick exhaust because you, if negating like 50 percent of like zed damage is really really strong or 50 percent of like a wukong or 50 percent of you know an akali burst or something like that like that's really useful now like, 50% damage reduction is a lot. Like, that's almost more... You can ne technically negate more damage than just simply getting heal, you know? So, and sometimes it's even worth getting exhaust on your AD because sometimes your AD wants some kind of 
um, CEC for himself. Like, with my AD that I play on my team, like, he actually runs Exhaust and I run Heal. So, it kind of depends, but it might be worth your time to get Exhaust if you're playing solo queue support. But, that kind of depends. You should always ask your AD. And Heal also got buffed. I think you should actually always take Heal now. Heal is very, very good. So, the reason why I think Heal is really strong is that, one, you can target another person, which is really good. And you don't, actually don't really have to aim that much, because you kind of you just have to point your mouse like somewhere near the person, and they get healed, which is kind of nice. It removes healing reduction effects, so which this basically counters like ignite really really hard. So it doesn't really like do the ignite. It doesn't. It can basically negate ignite damage, which is sweet. And you also get a very nice movement speed boost, which is actually saved people many many times like if you're getting ganked and you just slap on a heal you can just run away <laughs> so it's really stupid like this new heal is ridiculously strong i think you sh somebody bot lane should always have heal do not get barrier anymore if your ad is getting barrier tell them to get heal instead because there is no point in getting barrier when you can get heal for two people as opposed to barrier for one ignite nothing really changed and barrier nothing really changed and i don't really want to talk about dragon so those are the changes for um, this patch 4.5. And so my predictions for what I think will be top tier supports. I think number one will be Soraka. I guarantee you right now. Soraka will be very, very strong. You can, especially like the AP route, like that will be ridiculously strong. I don't, I will not be surprised if Riot nerfs her next patch. Um, you can also probably play her like in a more passive route if you want to play that aggressively. Because now you can just run like just gold for 10 seals and quins get armor marks and i think that should be okay and i think soraka will be top tier i think all the heal people will be top tier i think nami and sona will definitely rise up one rank to where like thresh annie leona are i still think thresh annie leona are still very solid picks actually annie probably not so much anymore thresh and leona are still really strong and i guess i'll throw morgana up there too so now she's really up there. So all of those champions I just mentioned are definitely the picks you should go for right now. It's pretty diverse, actually. But also, since Morgana is really popular, choosing like Soraka or Sona or Nami is a very strong answer towards Morgana. And I guess Janna is there, too. Just because like Morgana just does really bad against sustain and passiveness. <laughs> so definitely go for the champions if you really dislike Morgana. And then I guess one tier below would just be everybody else, because I don't think it's worth your time picking anyone else that I just didn't mention. And I don't know. And I've also been playing support Nidalee a lot recently, just because I think new changes favor her a lot. And I think she's actually really good. <laughs> like, I hate being one of those guys that plays support Nidalee, but I think support Nidalee is really strong. So that's what I personally think. And so that's my rundown of the patch. Let me guys... Let me know if you want to, if I didn't address something about the patch, leave a comment. If you want to voice your own opinion about stuff, leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to add my own insight to whatever I just said. So thanks for listening, and I hope you guys like my advice. So see you guys later.